Have you got a drink there? <laughs> Not yet, no. Oh. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce Alec from England, who has fibromyalgia. Welcome, Alec. Hi. Could you tell me when you were diagnosed with fibromyalgia? Yeah, I was diagnosed in 2001, um, but obviously I'd had a lot of symptoms prior to that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what were your symptoms? Um, gradually increasing pain. I'd had some of the other symptoms that go with fibromyalgia, like I'd had headaches and I'd had brain fog and I'd had fatigue for a really long time. Um, and the pain kind of sneaked up on me and I'm basically when it got to the point where I couldn't actually put one foot in front of the other and I realised that not only did I have a, a bad back that I'd had for years, I actually hurt absolutely everywhere. And that's when I went to the doctor and said, I'm not sure that this is really okay. Mm -hmm. How old were you, Alec? <clears throat> 36 when I was diagnosed. Um, but it took two years from going to the doctor and saying, I really am not okay to getting a diagnosis from a consultant or rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. And how long ago was that? Um, 11 years, getting on for. Right. So how did you hear about LDN? Well, I started to, my condition started to deteriorate. It's kind of, it, it's been up and down. It, it used to be much, much worse than it is now. But I started to go down the hill again about two years ago. Um, and I, I kind of tried to and tried to carry on working and doing everything. And then about 12 months ago, it was really getting to an acute phase again. And every so often while I've had it, I've done searches on anything new under the sun and I've pretty much given up that there was anything. And then um, because it was getting so bad, I was seriously considering having to give up work again. And so I went online to have a fish round to see if there was anything new under the sun. And I came across um, Dr. Sean Mackay's YouTube lecture from Stanford, um, and he was talking about fibromyalgia, and right at the end of it, he mentioned the pilot LDN study. So that was how I first had even heard of it. I'd never heard of it before then, and because I heard of it then, then I started to check out what it was and what it did and what my options were for having some, because mm -hmm. I have literally tried everything else. So, how did you manage to get a prescription for LDN? Ah, oh, that was less simple. Finding the LDN was simple, getting it was not simple. Um, I actually, when I did all the research, downloaded your information pack and took it to my GP. Mm -hmm. Said, look, this is something that I haven't tried yet. I've tried everything that everybody has suggested with the most horrendous side effects. I'm really, really sensitive to medication. Um, so everything I've ever tried medication wise has had quite horrendous side effects for me and nothing that I've come across to date until LDN, um, I had enough benefit from the side effects to make it worthwhile taking. So although I've persevered with stuff and tried, I, I've in the end had to come off pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing that I've ever done that's ever made any significant difference is actually meditation. Um, which obviously doesn't really have any side effects that are negative. Mm -hmm. So I went to my GP and I said, look, LDN, can I try it? I have tried everything else. Um, she said, I've never heard of it. Um, I bet it's horribly expensive. And I said, I don't believe it is. I believe it's about £20 a month. And she said, oh, well, that's pretty much the same as an average antidepressant. Um, I gave her the information pack. She said, I can't prescribe this, but I can take it back to the practice and we can have a case discussion. I will get back to you. Two weeks later, I had heard nothing. I went back to see my GP. She went, oh, I've been meaning to get in touch. No way. You can't have it. We won't prescribe it. And I said to her, can you tell me why not? And she said, yes, because we don't have any drug addicts at the surgery, so we're not used to the medication. And I said, I'm sorry. She said, you're just asking me for an opium. And I went, no, I'm not. It's exactly the opposite of an opiate. <laughs> so she said, well, you can't have it. And it's no good seeing any of the other doctors because we've had a case discussion and you're not getting it from us. So I kind of looked at her a little bit um, gobsmacked and said, 
where do I go from here? And she said, oh, I suggest you buy it off the internet. And I went, isn't that a little bit dodgy? And she said, oh, yes, you would have to be ever so careful buying drugs off the internet. I'm not recommending it. So I said, could I see perhaps somebody at the pain clinic? Could I get a referral? So she said, that's a really good idea. She started to write on her computer and then she said, oh, can I just say, if you see a consultant, there is absolutely no way on earth we're going to prescribe it to you, even if they say it would be a good idea. <laughs> so I thought, well, I think I've just had kind of a door slammed in my face and a brick wall built behind it. Um, so I left and I was, I was actually really distressed. And I wasn't distressed because she wouldn't give it to me. She'd given me a rationale for why I couldn't have it. Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't have had a problem. Um, but basically she was saying, I don't know anything about it, so you can't have it. Um, and I, I live quite rurally and that there is a sense of how can the patient possibly know anything. Um, even though I'm a consultant psychologist and obviously got half a brain and I'm very research focused. And I had, I had even printed off Dr. Mackay's and um, Dr. Younger's study and given it to the doctor to read. And she said, there's only so much I want to read. I'm not interested in that. So she didn't even want to find out the LDN for me. I got in touch with you guys via your website um, and said, is there another doctor who you know in my location? Because people had said to me, why don't you change GP? But you have to, you have to register with a GP before you get to ask them if they even believe in your condition, um, which is another problem I have with my GP because my GP said to me, can you even tell me what fibromyalgia is? Oh dear. Yeah, uh, not very positive. So um, you guys put me onto the Prescribe For Me website. Mm -hmm. um, so I went on there, filled in all the details, filled in like a, a health questionnaire. And, um, and then a doctor rang me, asked me lots and lots of questions about all my symptoms, about everything I'd ever tried. And she did say to me, gosh, I think you're the first person I've ever spoke to who has literally tried everything that is even possible, uh, apart from LDN. She said that she had concerns about me having LDN because of my sensitivity to medication. I mean, I, I go into anaphylactic shock and stuff like that, so I'm pretty sensitive. So what she suggested was um, that she would prescribe it. She did think that I was a good candidate because I had tried everything else. Um, she suggested that a good way for me to do it was to take half a milligram at night for a week. If that was okay, then to put it up to a milligram. For a week mm -hmm. and so gradually increased the dose and then she said if I started to get to a point where my symptoms deteriorated again to move back down half a milligram for a week until I found effectively what was going to be the best dose for me assuming that I had any benefit from it um, and she rang me uh, again um, after a month and again I think maybe after a month another month to see how it was going and to make sure that it, it was okay for my system and so on and so forth. And so now I fill in my repeat prescription request online and the, uh, the chemist send me the medication direct um, recorded delivery. So how did you feel when you first started? Did you have any problems even though it was such a low dose? With the LDN? Yes. Instantly um, I had a reaction which I kind of took to be quite positive. I'd, I'd read about um, the dreaming, mm -hmm. which was the only side effect that people seemed to be complaining of. And sure enough, the second night I took it, even on half a milligram, I had these amazing dreams, not scary dreams, but just the detail in them was quite phenomenal, quite interesting. Being a psychologist, obviously, I was even more interested. <laughs> um, so for probably um, the first week, I had those really startling detailed um, dreams and then it it stopped I didn't have any more after that and then after about three weeks so what um, five, wait a minute we've got yeah. a high-pitched hiss did you hear that no yeah I don't have it here are you are I've got off? this awful it drowned you out okay, okay so really fine. sorry that's that all right this is gonna have to be cut out if you can go back to uh, <clears throat> about your dreams not being yeah. no problem Horrific or anything. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I, I almost immediately, it was, I, I think the second night, I, I started, even though it was 
such a tiny dose, I started to have these really detailed, detailed dreams. Not scary, nothing like that, but just really tiny, tiny detail that I could see re really vividly. That lasted for about um, four or five days, and then they stopped. And, and actually, I took that as a really positive sign, because I thought, my God, if I'm reacting to half a milligram, um, this, this might have some benefit. And then a couple of weeks later, uh, when I was on about, I must have been on about two milligrams by then, so it would have been like the fourth week. Um, it, yeah, it, I, I started to have the dreams again, but maybe two or three nights. And since then, I haven't, I haven't had any startling dreams. And so I didn't have any other negative impact. All the stuff that I've taken, I didn't have dry mouth, I didn't have... Um, fog. In fact, if anything, it cleared my mind um, pretty quickly. Once I got to about um, two milligrams, I started to really notice an improvement because my condition was really horrible at that point. Um, so I started to see improvements. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how long have you been on the LDN now? Started to take it at the end of October. But obviously increasing at only half a milligram a week, it took me a while to get up. When I got up to four milligrams, my symptoms actually started to deteriorate. Um, so I came back down, as you'd suggested, and then went slowly back up to four and a half. But at four and a half milligrams, it's too much. <clears throat> my um, my pain increases and it's, um, it's not great. So I actually vary my dose ever so slightly. I'm, I'm back down at three milligrams at the minute. I was on three and a half for quite a long time. Um, but I had some additional treatment at the hospital that I kind of feel that I was not coerced, but um, persuaded. I was persuaded by the pain clinic to try a new treatment, um, which I did. I carried on taking the LDN throughout, which they said wouldn't be a problem because it's obviously it's in your system for such a short time. Um, that treatment in sensitized me horribly, made my symptoms much worse. I was really poorly for the three weeks that I was having the treatment. Um, so since then, I've gone back down to three milligrams, and that's what I'm taking at the moment. And it's probably taken me five or six weeks to recover from the treatment. And I, um, I started walking last week. I've not been able to walk any distance for, for quite some time. And eight out of the last 10 days I've been able to go for a walk. I only walk six minutes away from the house and then six minutes back and I'm gradually sneaking it up. But I haven't been able to do that for a year. Goodness. So, it's so really as, as a summary, what would you say about LDN? I think for me, the most important thing is not my movement and my reduction in pain. The most important thing for me is the clarity that I now have back in my head. Um, obviously, I'm a consultant and my work is quite full on. I work with people with severe and enduring mental health problems. I work with people who are psychotic. So I have to kind of have my wits about me. Um, and I'm involved in um, clinical governance in hospitals and things. So I need to be able to think. And having my head back is the absolute best thing. And I would say the clarity in my head has probably improved 70%. My ability to think, to concentrate, not to lose my thread in conversations, to write reports, all of those things is fantastic. My pain has probably reduced 60%. And my fatigue levels, uh, it's another important thing for me because obviously you can't get up and go to work if you can't get out of bed because you're so tired and my my fatigue I'd say was 80% improved it's it's absolutely phenomenal it works for me okay, it's fantastic isn't it it really it, is, it is. <clears throat> mm. I mean, it, it almost is unbelievable if I wasn't experiencing it if I was looking for about a 10 20% improvement in my symptoms when I started taking this just so that I could get on with my life my husband my friends, my colleagues cannot believe that it's like I'm back. I'm back from wherever I've been for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Does your GP notice any difference? Have you been back? My GP doesn't speak to me. I, if I like, I had to go with this throat because I've had it for five weeks. This sore throat, and she just deals with whatever I have to say. And she she doesn't ask me how my fibromyalgia is. She she doesn't mention it. And to be honest. 
I don't mention it to her because it hardly seems worth the uh, the time and trouble. Mm. What would you say to other people with fibromyalgia who are now just beginning to look into it? I would say give it a shot. But because a lot of the people that I know with fibromyalgia, which isn't a huge amount, but I, I've joined a support group re- recently, that my my understanding of other people with fibromyalgia and from what I've read is that actually we are quite sensitized. Mm-hmm. And so my advice would be not to go in at four and a half milligrams. My voice would be, advice would be to creep it up like I did and see what suits you, but absolutely to give it a shot because nothing, nothing else I have tried gives me relief like this. And I have to say, I am not taking any painkillers. Wow. And everyone else I know with fibromyalgia is having to struggle through their life because of the side effects of taking painkillers. Mm. <clears throat> a lot of people I've found with fibromyalgia end up taking a cocktail of drugs. Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, each drug carries yeah. certain possible side effects. And then, of course, it's like building up this pyramid. Yeah. And you're bound to get one of them, aren't you, you know? Yeah. And my other, my other understanding from, from what I've tried in the past and from what other people I, I know are trying are that you're, you're then battling with those side effects. But actually, your fibromyalgia isn't, proof, isn't improving significantly enough for it to be worth that. They're just taking anything that the doctor will give them in the hope that something will relieve. And actually, not very much is. But the LDN is, is so cheap, it so doesn't have the side effects that it must be worth a shot. Yes. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. I mean, it's so inspirational and you've done remarkably well. And yeah, October, it's such a short period of time that you've had it. You know, i would be really interested in probably doing a follow-up with you in, mm. say, six months' time to see how you have... No problem. The, the doctor that I spoke to said to me, you know, give it six months before you know if it's going to do you any good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's been six months now. And my husband says to me, I, I can't believe it's like I have you back. Yes. So it's a wonderful yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's like I'm back in my life. <laughs> you, you are um, more than welcome to get back to me. I, I,